You're listening to The Manning Report with your host, James David Manning. The news behind the headlines. Dating this message in the middle of October, the 17th of October to be exact, it's the date that Elijah Cummings, Representative Elijah Cummings of the House of Representatives, uh, Chairman of the Oversight Committee, uh, has passed away. He passed away this morning. And the news has uh, spread across the uh, media uh, uh, of those who have been involved in politics and have known Elijah Cummings for the good of the many years. Born in the year 1951, uh, son of a sharecropper, uh, which was quite common um, in, in those years. Uh, born um, and, and probably himself did sharecropping and his family moved uh, to Maryland, Baltimore in particular, which was a point north looking for a better and more lucrative lifestyle, uh, and became a member of the House of Representatives in the state and state of Maryland. Later, became congressman for that state and has passed away. Um, Elijah Cummings, of course, being one of those who were bred in the civil rights movement, um, I will attribute to him the fact that he lived uh, in the inner city in Baltimore. He lived among the people. He did not move out to find greener pastures among perhaps what we may consider a, a, a lifestyle that was befitting of his income level and his influence level. Um, uh, but he has passed away, and I suppose that uh, we want to take the time here on the Manning Report today to acknowledge that. I do want to pull up, however, one of Elijah Cummings, what I thought was a stellar moment of his addressing Michael Cohen I did not know Mike, uh, Elijah Cummings, but I did know Michael Cohen, and I understood uh, that day when, my, when Elijah Cummings, being the chairman of the Oversight Committee, addressed Michael Cohen, I felt that particular passion. And to, today, in terms of my recognizing Elijah Cummings' passing, I would want to, uh, to uh, say, first of all, to Tribulation Trump, Elijah Cummings is dead. Are you, do you feel better now? Do you feel like a winner? Uh, since you called him so many names and you belittled him in so many ways and berated him uh, as many ways as you possibly could, he's dead now. Do you feel better, Tribulation Trump? Does that ease some of the pressure that you have that he's no longer chairman of the Oversight Committee? That I'd like to say. And then I'd like to have Elijah Cummings, as I said before, address when he was addressing and had the potential to address Michael Cohen in a Senate hearing just before Michael Cohen himself was sentenced to prison time in the um, federal state prison system. Mr. Engineer, roll that clip, if you will, please. You know, I've sat here and I've listened to all of this. And it's very painful. It's very painful. Um... You um, made a lot of mistakes, Mr. Cohen, and you've admitted that. And, um, you know, one of the saddest parts of this whole thing is that some very innocent people are hurting too. And you acknowledge that. And um, that's your, your family. And... So you come here today and you, I, 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 deep in my heart, after, I, you know, and when I practice law, I represent a lot of lawyers who got in trouble. <clears throat> and you've come saying I had made my mistakes, but now I want to change my life. Um... And you know, if we, if, if we um, as a nation did not give people an opportunity after they made mistakes to change their lives, um, a whole lot of people would not do, do very well. I don't know where you go from here. Uh, as I sat here and I listened to both sides, um, I just felt as if 
and, and you know, people are u- now using my words that they took from me, that didn't give me any credit. We are better than this. <laughs> we are so much, we really are. As a country, we are so much better than this. And, you know, I told you, I, I, and, 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 and for some reason, Mr. Cohen, I've, I've, I tell my, 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 my children, I say when bad things happen to you, do not ask the question, why did it happen to me? Ask the question, why did it happen for me? I don't know why this is happening for you, but it is my hope that a small part of it is for our country to be better. If I hear you correctly, it sounds like you're crying out for a new normal, for us getting back to normal. It sounds to me like you want to make sure that our democracy stays intact. When I, the one meeting I had with President Trump, I said to him, the greatest gift that you and I, Mr. President, can give to our children is making sure that we give them a democracy that is intact. A not democracy better than the one that we came upon. And I'm hoping that the things you said today will help us begin to get back there. You know, I mean, come on now. I mean, when you got, according to the Washington Post, our president has made at least 8,718 8,718 false or misleading statements. That's stunning. That's not what we teach our children. I don't teach mine that. And for whatever reason, you sound like you got caught up in it. You got caught up in it. You got caught up in it. And some kind of way, I hope that you will, I, I know that it's painful going to prison, I know, I know it's got to be painful being called a rat. And let me, let me explain. A lot of people don't know the significance of that, but I live in the inner city of Baltimore. All right? And when you call somebody a rat, that's one of the worst things you can call them because when they go to prison, that means a snitch. I'm just saying. And so the president called you a rat. We're better than that. We really are. And I'm hoping that all of us can get back to this democracy that we want and that we should be passing on our, to our children so that they can do better than what we did. And so you wonder whether people believe you. I don't know. I don't know whether they believe you. But the fact is that you come, you have your head down, and this has got to be one of the hardest things that you could do. Let me tell you the picture that really, really pained me. You were leaving the prison, you were leaving the courthouse, and I guess it's your daughter, had braces or something on. Man, that thing, man, that thing hurt me. As a father of two daughters, it hurt me. And I can imagine how it must feel for you. But I'm just saying to you, I want to, first of all, thank you. I know that this has been hard. I know that you face a lot. I know that you are worried about your family. But this is a part of your destiny. And hopefully, this portion of your destiny will lead to a better, a better, a better Michael Cohen, a better Donald Trump, a better United States of America, and a better world. And I mean that from the depths of my heart. When we're dancing with the angels, the question will be asked, in 2019, what did we do to make sure we kept our democracy intact? 
Did we stand on the sidelines and say nothing? Did we play games? And I'm tired of these statements saying, they come, people come in here and say, oh, oh, this is the first hearing. It is not the first hearing. The first hearing was with regard to prescription drugs. Remember, a little girl, a, a, a lady said there, Miss Wortham, her daughter died because she could not get $333 a month in insulin. That was our first hearing. Second hearing, HR1, voting rights, corruption in government. Come on now. We can do more than one thing. And we have got to get back to normal. With that, this meeting is adjourned. Michael Cohen's Cohen is in Otisville prison here in the state of New York, federal penitentiary. And Elijah Cummings is dead at the age of 68 years of age. And I thought that that might have been one of his great moments as he addressed a man who he felt an injustice had been served against and our entire nation had turned had has been turned upside down by the maniacal draconian pathological degeneracy of tribulation trump this is a bit of a news blog we do looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the Word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man in the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be like led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.